Hello! Welcome to Riff and Ravel! Uh, we're finished our sort of prologue type introductory sessions, uh, seeing as how <laughs> most of our group had never played 5e before, and one of our group had never played D&D at all. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> um, before we get started, I do have to say, being a new DM, I was doing a lot of research about this module and uh, took a lot of pointers from uh, the PowerScore RPG blog. So players, please do not look that up. Pick up on that one. <laughs> there will be Pick spoilers the there. Right now. How do you spell that so I don't accidentally <laughs> search it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Just I want a link so I don't go to that link. Just so no, I don't want to go there. no, that's not going to happen. I can, I can DNS block the link. <laughs> But credit where credit's due, um, some of these ideas and inspirations were from someone else. So, uh, tonight, we are starting with a bit of a... Oh, if I get my stuff together here, I'm a little all over the place. Starting a little differently. So, our characters, our heroes, ended the last session uh, having successfully rescued a young farm boy. But named Wesley. Theo, not Wesley. <laughs> but before we get back to our heroes there, we're traveling across time, perhaps. Uh, we, we see a small village on a riverbank consisting of stone cottages with mud-sealed timber roofs covered with turf. Many of them are broken, the roofs collapsed, or walls broken and crumbling. Smoke and flames rise from many of the ruined homes. Large boulders have torn paths through the grass and the buildings alike. People are screaming as they run for the hills to the north. Some people are screaming as they're plucked from the ground or their homes through the holes in their roof by hill giants. The other screams are people dying. In the midst of the chaos, a small child wanders unnoticed, calling for her mother. Her blue eyes stand out against the dirt and ash streaking her face. Her silvery hair hangs loose and tangled around her shoulders. It's North, little more than a toddler. She screams out for her mother again, and this time catches the notice of a nearby giant. Its ugly face turns in her direction and grins, exposing large gaps of missing teeth. It drops the limp body in its hand to the ground and begins lumbering towards the girl. Norris looks around in the dim sunlight and spots her mother a short distance away, laying on her back in the grass. She runs to her mother and drops to her knees beside her. Her mother's eyes are open, but she's not moving. North grabs her by the shoulders and shakes her, begging her mother to get up. Little one makes good snack. A voice rumbles over North's head. The girl looks up, eyes wide, into the face of the hill giant as it reaches a hand down towards her. North's gaze flicks past the giant, distracted by a flash of light over the creature's shoulder. The giant takes notice and hears the loud whoosh of air behind him. He turns, and they both watch a large bronze dragon plummet through the air to land on an open patch of ground. But its momentum is too much for the muddy ground, and with a loud whoop, the dragon slips and then slides into a group of four hill giants, bowling Oop. them all over in a tangle of arms, legs, and wings. The metallic dragon quickly extricates himself rears his head back, releases a devastating line of lightning, flashes from his mouth, and slams mm. into the four giants attempting to right themselves. They all fall back to the mud, unmoving, steam rising slowly from their clothing. The giant standing over North yells in anger as he watches his comrades fall and runs towards the dragon. The bronze dragon wraps itself around the attacking giant claws, gripping into flesh 
The shining head rears back and snaps down on the giant's neck. The great ugly head of the hill giant falls to the mud with a wet splock. And the dragon roars in triumph. The rest of the giant force begins to flee with the appearance of this new dangerous foe. The dragon surveys the damaged village and notices North kneeling over her mother. With heavy but graceful steps, the large dragon approaches the girl. Hello, little one. My name is Felgolov. Are you all right? What do you do, North? Little North? Uh, little North is a little scared, but has gone through some pretty traumatic events. So she just kind of stares at him, unable to say anything. He feels the response, and he's... He... Just a moment. You see his his bronze form shimmer and shrink. You blink, and now you see a, a halfling man with a, a welcome smile where the dragon stood just a moment ago. Much less scary, don't you think? <laughs> he walks to stand next to you and places a warm hand on your shoulder, his smile fading. I'm very sorry I could not save your mother, little one. He looks around the now still village and his tone changes. I'm afraid it won't be safe for you here. Those giants will return when they gather their nerve. I have some friends nearby who will protect you for now and bring you home to your family once it's safe. Would you allow me to bring you there, little one? He holds out his hand in offer. Little North takes a moment to uh, gather what she has just seen. Uh, while magic is not new to her, this whole situation is. Um, as she looks down to her feet and notices some blood start to pool and touch her toes, she curls them in. Uh, she takes a step back and looks up at his hand and begins to cry as she grabs it. He pulls you in close. Puts an arm around your shoulders. He's not much taller than you in halfling form. Um, and quietly leads you away from, from the carnage, from, the, from your home uh, south towards the high forest. And now we see North grown. Uh, much taller now. The young woman walking with some strange companions along the trade road. Um, they left Eliza's farmhouse early in the morning after she fed them what hearty food she could provide. She sent them along with some bro loaves of bread, not broths of lead. Um, <laughs> oh, I was actually needing some lead. Oh. Darn it. Words. And uh, now you guys are on your way to Daggerford, uh, where the halfling Mala had told you to come after helping Eliza. Uh, so you're heading north on the trade road. There's uh, a lot of people on the road. Um, you're seeing a lot of more well-armed people on the road as well, uh, either by themselves or accompanying farmers, uh, merchants, um, other travelers. Pardon me. Uh, there's a lot of people heading towards Daggerford, heading south out of Daggerford. Um, it's, it's pretty busy on this road, but you don't have any trouble traveling. Uh, what are you guys doing? I have, a quick, I have a quick question. These got these people walking the road that we pass or pass us or however however it happens, and that that they're armed and whatnot. Are we seeing any kind of organization amongst them? Are we seeing like soldiers or are they like adventurers, kind of like us? What what's the what's the makeup? They look more like hired guards, not uh, military. There's no uh, uniforms necessarily. It's more just. Um protection and they're walking away from daggerford uh there's like as you get closer to daggerford there's more people streaming south 
uh, but there are people also heading into Daggerford with you. Um, it just seems that maybe most of the people that had been go going to Daggerford, like you were traveling with them before your excursion to help Eliza and Theo. It's not really unusual with the, the pace of traffic. It's like most of the people are who are going to Daggerford are, are there. The markets are already open, so the farmers and merchants are already there. It's just the time of day. Hmm. Mm, okay. Uh, so, is there anything you guys want to do before you reach the city? Well, no, not really. Not not. Not really <laughs> specific. No. Sorry. no. Well, nah. Are you guys traveling like together, together, like side by side, or are you just kind of nearby? Well, Walking like heroes, <laughs> abreast of each other. Well, Braddock's up on the seat of his little two wheeled wagon, his donkey, Rollo. He's pulling <sighs> it along. Mm hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how the other three would would kind of fall out away from that or not. You know, like if they'd be up even with him or behind him or whatnot. Well, did he invite them to, onto the cart, or is there space for them oh, on the cart? No, there wouldn't be. There wouldn't be room. It, it's it's you know maybe one and a half people. That's a fast wide no. the seat is. Okay. I I imagine Bravo. Um is walking and reading at the same time and occasionally stumbling and bumping into people. <laughs> it's perfect. Yep. That I, sounds almost about picture, right. I almost picture where they first set off at Bravo Corks kept trying to get up on the seat and ride with mm -hmm. for, for like the first couple of miles. Like, no, come on, I, I can fit. I can fit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, North and Carrie and I imagine are together, like walking together. Yep. Are you I'm, near them? Are you guys keeping conversation? Or are you just sort of... Carrion, we're going to the same area. Carrion would uh, keep um, near the wagon, not necessarily abreast of the wagon, but near the wagon with Braddock. And uh, just keeping an eye on people in the group. And the people were passing, but walking in silence mostly, using the staff um, as a walking stick. I mean, it's a staff. I guess it's the same thing, really. <laughs> Depends on how you're using it, yes. <laughs> it's a walking stick. Now it's a hitting stick. Yes. Well, the first multi-tool. Yeah, I, I imagine Bravo, um, after having walked and stumbled and bumped into people, would absentmindedly somehow end up walking behind the cart just so that it sort of breaks the crowd. But he, he's not paying attention. Mm. Not really. He's poured over this book fairly okay. intently focused on, on what's written in it. So does the countryside around this, because Carrion's looking, you know, I mean, he's kind of looking at people, but he's not like examining them. He's more interested in, in the forest and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask, are we on the side of the road or in the middle? It's, uh, it's a main thoroughfare. So it's a, it's a very well kept road compared to um, like the side country roads and stuff. It's a, uh, it's fairly wide, like you can get carts going in opposite directions very easily with lots of room for people. So, um, I mean... Where's Braddock walk... driving? Yeah, are yeah. we talking about left to side of the road, right side of the road kind of situation? You know, like which way... Let's to... say we're going North American, so <laughs> you're on the right side going I... north. <laughs> okay. Uh, but... Okay. You do have to sort of make way for um, horse and carriage and cart traffic. So people would be more uh, off to the side, whereas the carts and carriages would be in the middle. Carrying would definitely be walking to the right of the wagon then. Um, yeah, north would probably be the same, hanging back, um, heading leaf. Mm -hmm. Now, does Carrion, uh, well, he's looking around the countryside. What, is this, what does the countryside look like? Is it ravaged? Is it well taken care of? Uh, this close to Daggerford, it's uh, mostly farmland. Um, so it's fenced off. It's fields of tended crops of different sorts. Um, 
further to the south, it was hilly. There were some marshes and forest, but uh, just around Daggerford, it's it's flatter, a bit of hills, uh, but it's mostly mostly farms. For the time of year, are there are the crops mostly harvested, or is it, you know, does it look like there may be some kind of food shortage going on at all? Judging uh, the crops, the the fields seem full they're uh they're growing well they seem um i mean it's early fall like it's almost like just the turn of the season almost so it's uh you're seeing more fall based crops um wheat turnips pumpkins that kind of thing but uh not quite ready for harvest like getting there kind of kind of deal gotcha gotcha okay but she <laughs> guys quit playing footsies with your no. <laughs> uh so i would i would imagine that um i don't know maybe maybe 5 or 6 miles into the journey rollo's kind of gone on autopilot he's pulled the cart for so long that that braddock doesn't really have to steer he, so braddock's kind of slumped down his elbows on his legs and he's he's really just holding the reins in case anything goes to hell, just as a matter of show. And he's he's got a real pensive kind of thinking look on his face, and he he finally starts talking, not really to anybody in particular, but he just he just kind of throws it out there. Right. So, how far are we going to take this? The four of us are going to Daggerford, and then what? Um, and I guess I guess Bravo would just sort of, again, absentmindedly. Um, oh yes, 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 books. Ah, uh, we we'll find some we'll find some delicious books in Daggerford, and uh, and then we'll learn, and then we'll learn, and then we'll go. Braddock sounds a, a little um, annoyed, slightly annoyed. Anyone besides the elf have anything to add? <laughs> oh yes, yes, going to Daggerford. What about you, Druid? Well, I don't suppose I actually mentioned this before, but I'm a, I'm a member of the Emerald Enclave, and my order sent me to investigate uh, the ongoings in the Sword Coast. Uh, yeah, uh, a bit of out-of-game conversation real quick. Just if, <laughs> if I'd have known that we could have made ourselves a dragon? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> you could have. <laughs> Uh, form of dragon. No, I can make me a dragon. You can't do that. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> what is a dragonkin? Um, would I have any knowledge of, about what the Emerald Enclave is, Callie? Make a history check. Oh, my character sheet's not open. Oh, you got caught with your pants down. Uh, history is. Says there. the guy who has to open his character sheet. Real quick. Uh, yeah. So you haven't had many dealings with them personally, so you don't know a lot about them. But you would know, sort of, that their their main reason for being is the protection of nature and civilization from each other. Right. So. Like they seek to maintain a balance between industrialization and nature. Right. Um, they don't want people ruining nature or nature ruining people. Okay. Um, as soon as uh, oh, I forget the name, what's your dude's name, Travis? Uh, Carrion. Okay. Um, as soon yeah, as thanks. Carrion. Says Emerald Enclave, Bravo, just kind of absent mindedly mumbles, mm, Yes, well, protectors of balance, very important, very important. Were you... not really paying attention, so she's just gonna keep walking. Okay, <laughs> is she kind of like, is she kind of like heads down looking at the ground as she walks? She's, uh, she's actually weasel. looking uh, up and forward, <laughs> petting her weasel. <laughs> she's, she's, 
She may want to do that. She has a pet weasel <laughs> named Leaf. He made an appearance. No, she is which... probably paying more attention to where they're going and um, kind of like Karen has that focus on um, nature and stuff. She's going to be, unless it's really imperative that she pays attention, she's probably going to be looking like daydreamy, but don't mistake that for like not paying attention to anything. Oh, I'm going to mistake it. Already yeah, mistook. <laughs> Nature and stuff. Um, to Bravo Quark's remark, um, Karrion nods. Quite, quite important. Uh, I myself, uh, well, North and I actually, um, have a similar mission, and we intend to go to Daggerford. Uh, I will speak with Mala, but um, I did intend to go to the authorities and get a better understanding of the region. Bravo looks up from his book and goes, mm, Sorry, what, what was that? <sighs> yes. And Carrion just keeps walking. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. And he, he dies deep back and and what about you braddock did you have a purpose i didn't have one up until a while ago but i suppose since we're heading to darker for now let's try and sell some of this stuff in the back of the cart my adventuring days are well behind me thank you very much you mean a day's walk? I mean, the farmhouse wasn't that far back. I'm afraid they're farther than that, boy. Hmm. A collapsing mine, saving a, a young lad. Maybe not as far as you think. I've probably been doing this longer than you've been alive. I've given up the adventuring life probably as long as you've been alive. Kelly, would I know much about Daggerford? Uh, Daggerford. And I the mean, surrounding area. Like, would I be able to, to... What I want to know is, would Daggerford be the best place to sell wares? Daggerford's um, a decently populated city. Uh, it's not water deep, um, obviously, but it's got... A fair population it's got um a thriving market with right. the exception of highly specialized things um you could probably find most of your needs there you could probably find buyers for things would uh, bravo know that i would say so i mean i think bravo's got well he's got a bit of an outdated knowledge of the cities but daggerford's been around for a while it might be a bit bigger than you last remember, so... Yeah. Oh, great, so he's gonna get us lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, he hasn't necessarily been to Daggerford before. But um, he thinks he has. But he's, he knows I read this of... in a book once. Really? Yeah, yeah he knows of Daggerford. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, Daggerford. Well, actually, if you want to get the best price for your ways, you'd probably be better off at Waterdeep. Or Neverwinter, but that's quite a bit further away. Braddock doesn't even bother putting his hand, his head in his hand. He just drops his head and shakes his head, and then he goes back to talking to Carrion. Most of the stuff here in the back of my wagon came from a small town called Salwaller. It's a, it's a town I live outside of. If there's a bright spot in the planet, this is where it's the farthest from. Salwaller's where I live. And I had been planning to take this stuff to a larger town, but since the dear lady Mala offered her spot at the inn, well, I'm never one to turn away a, a fair hand. Mm, yes, well, uh, uh, very good, very good. Be I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get elf. for your goods, sir. Uh, no. Bravo, Clark. Like, to, to finish his point, he, like, slams <laughs> Just <laughs> dust flies everywhere. <laughs> like him, his books are dusty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't. You'll be on your own then. I don't know much about selling and buying. 
But why venture all this way just to sell wares? I not. I've come from farther, and I'll probably go farther before it's all said and done. Carry a dragon. Mm -hmm. You got me there. Why not indeed? A man of travels. Aye. This is a traveling fun. Traveling is very good. Lots of sites. Um, not so many books, though. Well, sometimes books. Sometimes there are stores with many, many books, but not not always. I wasn't doing it for the sightseeing. Mm, well, then, what? What? Why? That's hardly important now. Let's keep going. And he kind of he kind of whips the reins and gets gets Rollo to move a little faster. Let's go, Rollo. He says very clearly, not answering your question. Uh, all right. So uh, you all continue on the road, and it doesn't take too long to reach uh, the city. Um, you see the walls uh, before you reach it. It's built up on a, um, a bit of a hillside, so you can see it from quite a ways off. And uh, you can see over the, the top of the walls, um, the top of a lar like a tall building, obviously, if it's visible over the walls. Um, the walls seem fortified as you get closer. There's uh, a lot of guard activity, um, patrolling. Um, there's guards on the road leading into the city as well. They're not stopping people, but they're sort of walking with them. They're keeping their eyes out, um, occasionally questioning people or checking carts just to see what people are bringing in. But it's not like they're not on lockdown, but security seems alert. Um, but you make it into the city unmolested, and uh, Aww. <laughs> where would you like to go? Well, Braddock, uh, as soon as they're clear of the gate and inside the town proper, he kind of spurs Rollo on, and he goes, I'm headed for the Bardic District, or such that it is in this small bywater town. I'll Suppose if you all are there, I'll meet you at the inn. And he kind of heads off in the direction that he guesses is the uh, market, but he really has no idea. Well, I imagine he's been to Daggerford before. It's on the path between Waterdeep and uh, and the south, so... Yeah, that's he, true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, he may not know where exactly Malazin is, but uh, the happy cow, but... Um, he at least knows the areas of the city. Okay. Uh, what's everyone else doing? Um, Bravo pipes up and says, "Yes, yes, uh, in." But first, library, and then storms off in. I love how he said it with such vigor. Library, library. All right, uh, make an investigation check. Ooh. Good. Well. Ain't no library here, sucker. <laughs> I'm not terrible. At... It takes you, you a know. while, but with uh, Grillian's help, you locate the uh, library slash bookstore s building. There's only one, so <laughs> I imagine Norris Grillian is just... probably just standing there, like. I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he walks right past it. <laughs> I imagine, Three times. I like, really barely saved him from walking into a very seedy bar, thinking it was the library by, like, pulling on his collar and flapping away from him. <laughs> yeah. It'd be funny if, like, North and Grillian have, like, an understanding that they just make fun of him. So, like, North's, like, looking at Grillian and Grillian's looking at North and they just, like, start, like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, no, I know. <laughs> Uh, Grillian can communicate telepathically with um, with uh, Brava Corks, but yes. So Brava, you find your your library after about an hour of looking, but you're just so fascinated with all the people and the different mm. shops and stuff. About after an hour distracted. of looking and about six false positives. Yeah, <laughs> you find it. 
Can... Uh, do you just go into browse or? Yeah. Um, I would like to look at the books and see if they have anything uh, rare or interesting than the usual stuff. Okay. Um, do you just look on your own or do you ask for assistance? Um, Bravo is the type that would probably just look on his own first. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd just be like, um, yeah, so I'm looking for this. No, not that one. No, this one. No, not that one. Can I tell you about a story that I had with this book? <laughs> like, and the poor guy's just like, uh. So here's my afternoon. <laughs> so you walk into this library uh, bookshop and the clerk is like, good morning. You're like, yeah, yeah. And walk by. <laughs> Uh, and you go browsing through. What's everybody else doing? Uh, Carrion, North, what are you guys doing? Well, North kind of noticed or was feeling that something wasn't quite right uh, with the amount of guards walking around. So she kind of started to um, retreat a little bit. So she like tucked Leaf in um, her clothing and kind of like smoothed her hair out a little bit just because she like felt a little bit like she needed to be on her guard. Um, but she's still going to be standing with Carrie on since she's here uh, pretty much for the same thing. She'll just kind of look to him and be like, where are we going? Carrie just stands there at first at a loss for words with, um, with Braddock's um, cart going off into the crowd and vanishing and Bravo Quark's going the exact opposite way into the crowd, also vanishing, reappearing, and then vanishing again. Well, I guess we'll go to the inn, uh, wherever that may be. He turns and looks. Is there a, a, a city guard nearby? or? There's um, several. Yeah, I mean, there's well, those people mingling. Um, there's, I mean, there's townsfolk, too. Um, inside the walls, the guard presence isn't as heavy. Um, and the sort of atmosphere isn't one of um panic or or readiness it's just people going about their business it seems casual it seems normal um there's enough people around you ask around they happily point you in the direction of the happy cow everybody seems to know mala um so you could make it there no problem okay carrying with uh, after obtaining the information would head straight there not pushing his way through the crowd or anything, just trying to be very careful and go around people and such. Not drawing yep. attention the best he can. Yeah, uh, I mean, the streets are busy, but not packed. Um, there's lots of space. People are going about their business. Um, it's, you know, typical uh, busy day at a big city. And uh, you... you go through the streets following the directions you were given and you come upon a building with a, a a sign hanging out front with a rather cartoonish looking painted cow that's got a big old grin on its face and uh you walk in and uh you bought mala pretty quickly as she is bustling through um there's actually a lot of people in here. Um, not all the tables are full. Like, kind of like the street. It's busy, but not packed. Um, there's people eating leisurely. Some people are well into their cups. Other people are seem to be conducting, like, business meetings. Um, so it's well. Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With alcohol. Um, and so it's Starbucks. Yeah. But all of the staff are halfling. And um, they're, you just sort of through the crowd, you see these little uh, um, the trays um, laden with drinks and food and <laughs> empty <laughs> dishes, just sort of bobbing through the larger sized people. And uh, Mala is behind the bar. Um, you can actually see her above the bar, so they've obviously built to accommodate for their size um, uh, to serve to both tall and small folk. And so she's behind the bar and she's she's 
yeah. yelling at people, taking orders. She's ordering her her staff around, who you assume is family, because a lot of them resemble <laughs> each other. Um, and so she hasn't noticed you yet. Um, she seems busy, but there's space at the bar. There's empty tables. Uh, people coming and going. What would you like to do? Um, Carrion would carefully make his way over to the bar. Um, yeah. And because right. North is nosy, she would follow him. <laughs> he, uh, when he gets there, he leans his staff on the bar, leans forward on his elbows, and just kind of waits for Mala to get doing with, uh, get done with what she's doing. North will kind of sit daintily, like, tuck her robe underneath her and sort of, like, brush the little, ta like, scraps off the table and, like, kind of try and get herself comfortable, like, put her arms down and, like, move and then, like, move things around and then, like, finally settle down. All right. Um, as you approach the bar, Mala takes notice of you and uh, she finishes up pouring, pouring some ale into a tankard for some customers and then she uh, comes on over. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. How did it go? Did you find Theo? Yes, we did. It went, uh, it turned out just fine, I suppose. Oh. I, I'm i so glad to hear that. Oh, thank you so much for your help. What, what happened? Uh, the boy, uh, attempted to root out the thieves that had been plaguing the village, and he discovered... Uh, goblins and uh, and he quiets down and leans forward and kind of whispers an ogre. Ogre? Goblin? I guess thankfully uh, the cave that they were using to uh, hide their ill-gotten bounty uh, collapsed. We barely made it out but we did. No thanks to a stupid elf we know she says under her breath. Did... Is, is he okay too? Who? Whom? Your elf friend? Did he make it out? Yes. He's fine. Oh, oh, okay, yes, good. Okay. Oh, well, I... I have to say I'm surprised and not surprised to hear it was goblins. I just... What makes you say that? He interjects at hearing her say that. Well, to the north a bit, they've been having trouble with goblins at Nightstone. Um... There. It's a little city off the track between here and Waterdeep. Uh, the the lady, um, Lady Velros Velrosa, um, she's been looking for people to help uh, root them out, but there, there's always so many of them. They breed so quickly, and they've got all their little hidey holes in the in the caves around there, and they. They're hard to get rid of, but I didn't expect to find them so far south. North I... makes like a visible like shiver, like the way she described it is just like. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> goblins are foul creatures, but I guess uh, that's one one section of goblins taken care of for now. Let's hope they don't pop back up. Hopefully not. Uh, well, uh, successful um, venture. How about some drinks? Can I get you something on the house as payment? What can I get you? Side note, is North actually old enough to drink? I know she's like almost <laughs> 30, 40, but she probably looks really young. I mean, there's technically no, no legal okay. drinking age. It's more up to the discretion of the owners um okay. but she looks old enough mala would have no problem serving north her. looks to carry on and kind of like gives her puppy dog eyes what what are you looking at me like that for you can make your own decisions i want one <laughs> okay we have we have mead we have uh ale we have wine uh what, what's your pick your poison uh, red wine, please. Coming up, and for you. Do you did you have any cider? Uh, I think we have a 
barrel or so, yeah, I could probably find you some of that. If you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate it greatly. Uh, coming right up. Uh, please, make yourselves at home. Um, I'll find you a room as soon as we're, we're settled here. And she hops uh, down and heads into the back room um, where their lesser ordered uh, drinks are. Do you guys stay at the bar, find a table? Well, she's at a table, so uh, Carrion would uh, push off the bar and stand up, grab his staff, and go sit with North at the table. So, looks like we may be off to Nightstone next, depending on if we can find anything out else out here. Uh, Mala said it was between uh, here and Waterdeep. North nodded. Sound, well... Is everyone going to be coming with us? Well, the way Mala described it, it would be helpful to have the elf, well, as long as he doesn't abandon us again, or try to, the elf and the dwarf with us, but uh, if we have to, we'll go it alone. You're always like that, never wanting to do things alone. You'll come to learn it's much tougher than you think to survive on your own. She scoffs. Mala comes walking through and drops a couple uh, uh, a mug for for Carrion and a glass for Grapey for Grapey for North. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I looked at your screen and <laughs> for North. Uh, there you go. Um, it's not the fanciest of wines but we do what we can here at the happy cow um if you need any more we've got uh well any of my girls here their daughters and nieces and cousins just uh catch their attention if i'm not around and they'll be sure to keep you watered and fed if you choose thank you mama that's very kind will uh will the dwarf and the elf be by do you know they should be, they... yes. I believe oh, a here. dwarf friend went to the market and uh, the elf is hunting books. He's not very good at it. <laughs> she says as she takes a sip of wine. <gasps> well, better not to be hunting books than <laughs> hunting goblins, I guess. But uh, while you're here, take your, take your rest. She wanders off. Uh... In the library with Mr. Bravo Corks. Um, make an investigation check, please, for your search for rare books. Ba -dum. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I thought you said you were good at investigating things. <laughs> he does have a plus five, but. <laughs> so. <laughs> right? Um, you take your time. Uh, it's not. A huge uh, collection, but um, you're familiar with libraries. You're familiar with their layouts. So you know how to look for books. It's not difficult for you. Pardon me. Um, they have some books on magic. Most of them, it was magic books you were looking for, right? Oh, yeah, mostly magic, but anything... Um sort of interesting that he's not read before would do fine as well. Uh, okay, well, most of the magic books are fairly basic to his knowledge. Um, some of them are new in the time between your last visit to a library, uh, but still covering topics that you've already uh, researched spent some time on or found not so interesting um you find some new books on farming i mean this is a farming heavy mm -hmm. area so animal care tool repair and creation um there's new techniques uh technologies uh combinations of magic and labor <laughs> um mm -hmm. but nothing sort of eureka like right. 
Um, I imagine that Bravo would would pick up the books on on farming, um, specifically the ones that use magic. Um, having not read very many farming books, I'm I think he would find that interesting. All right. Yeah, uh, there's two books of, uh, there's one on uh, combination magic and manual labor, um, mostly like druidic type magic, nature based, um, not stuff that you're familiar with. So that is interesting in that regard. Mm. And the other one on uh, on animal care and uh, how to best effectively raise farm animals. Yeah, I imagine he would pick up those books. All right, no problem. You take them to the counter, mm-hmm. and he offers to sell them to you for 10 copper. Uh, yes. Um, what organization system do you use for your, for your library system? We use the alphabet. Mm. Well. Yes, that I mean that organization <laughs> system is one that is is used very commonly, but I find it's very difficult to find things based on school of magic. Um can I can I rearrange your books for you in exchange for these two? No. All right, ten copper it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he, he sells you the books. Uh pack them up. Um, so I have reluct, I will reluctantly, oops, hold on. I don't remember how, okay. I reluctantly, I reluctantly, um, hand over the, the 10 copper, um, and I, I scurry away the books in my cloak. Thank you for your business. I wish you a good day. Yes. Um. Should you decide on a a better, more efficient um, method of organization, just uh, look me up. And then he he turns abruptly and leaves. <laughs> okay, you tell him to look you up without giving your name. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, Braddock. Oh, sorry. And then I would oh. head over to the inn. Oh, you're heading to the inn. Okay. You yeah. uh, takes you a bit longer. As you're less inclined to ask people, but eventually you find the smiling, cartoony cow. Actually, um, before I leave, um, I would I would like to ask. And no, never mind. I had a joke that I wanted to do. But it's, <laughs> it's past. Okay. <laughs> All right, Braddock. Uh so so Braddock headed off into the into the market, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> he's very much he's he's very much scanning the stalls as he heads to the market and i imagine it's not like you said it's not, it's not a great big market so he kind of he kind of has to make several passes through the market to find what he's looking for but uh i sent you a list of mm-hmm. uh of stuff that i want to buy uh it's a small list but it's a very specific list no kidding um so for the for the people that are that are still with us. I'll go ahead and and, and read off that list. It's uh, uh he's so he's looking for uh salt, chicken, and wheat. And he's he's wanting to buy he's wanting to buy that stuff. Um, in the quantity he wants to buy twenty pounds of salt, three chickens, a hundred pounds of wheat. But and I can't stress this enough. Most importantly, he's trying to buy forty gallons of beer, <laughs> which yeah. equates out to one barrel. Uh, uh, all the all the prices are there. Um, so do you want do you want a, an investigation? You want an investigation to see if I can I can find all that stuff for sale? Yes, investigation, and then also an intelligence check, please. Intelligence. You which one do you want? Do you, do you matter? Does it matter which part? It did both. No. To see if you're smart enough to look investigation. For and there's the intelligence. All right. So it takes you a very long time to find exactly what you're looking for, especially the beer. You're very particular in your tastes. Um, but would. 
<laughs> while you are uh, traveling up and down the market, uh, you start to realize that maybe your cart won't hold a barrel of beer and a hundred pounds of weight. Just for sheer surface space. Yeah. So he, he realizes he so well, let's back up. As it's <laughs> taken him as it's taken him a long time to uh to look for this stuff, he he starts getting a little introspective and he kind of talks to himself. <sighs> I took that pat that post that quiet little hamlet of Sal Waller to try and avoid all of this nonsense. <sighs> now some upstart elf and some young whippersnapper and her druid companion. Ah, this is everything all over again. It's completely cyclical. He's he's talking to himself now. He's just he's just mumbling to himself as he's leading Rollo, his donkey, through the crowd. Ah, this always ends the same way. And he keeps on and he keeps on looking. And uh, so you said he found all the stuff, but he realizes it won't fit. Correct. Right. So what he's going to try and do is uh, buy each thing and sell it back at least trying to break even. If he can't sell it back, if he can't find a seller, what he's going to hold on to are the chickens uh, and the 40 gallons of beer. I honestly thought you said, well, I have to make the beer fit, so... (laughs) Bye, everything else. So you're trying to buy these things and then sell them... In not town? to the market. Not to the market. He's he's not trying to sell them back to the vendors in the market. He's trying to like find like so if he buys wheat, he's gonna try and find a miller in town to sell it to. I've got the best wheat from this in the whole seven counties. You know, that kind of thing. When he really just bought it down the road, he's trying to sell it back. The wheat is in branded bags. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> You do not succeed. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So he's he's got a um he's got the hundred pounds of wheat. Be just two fifty pound bags, but yeah, but yeah, I I get what you're saying. Uh, not so, a big cart with all of your stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's eventually going to just he's just going to get frustrated and probably at a loss sell um. Like I, he, I would imagine he's gonna sell half of the wheat and um, all of the salt. He's just gonna get rid of that. He's gonna sell it for whatever he can get okay. it for. And then he's gonna, so he's gonna keep like a bag, like half of the wheat and the barrel and the chickens, because the chickens you can just tie up and they'll just hang out and they'll, you know. Uh, and so oh, yeah, you I tell do that me with my chickens all the time. I just, I just tie them up and they hang out, man. It's great. <laughs> yeah, like upside down, you're like oh, just tie them by the feet and they just hang out. Um. So yes. Yeah, so okay. You, you, you North and Carrion would not be okay with that. That's why he don't, didn't bring you along. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't Ch- her Carrion. chicken senses are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's abusing animals. All right. So you managed to find. Uh, you managed to keep the beer. It's not as great quality as you would want, but it's beer. Um, and you get half your wheat and you keep your chicken. So you tell And now me. your cart is like full. Yes. Um So I assume I lost money on that, but grand total was six gold, six copper. So what you tell me how much I lost. Uh take out two co- two gold. You got it. So that being said, uh, he's very much aggravated that he wasn't able to 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 make as much money or any money as he as he wanted to. He kind of feels like he made money, you know. It, it, although in the grand total, because he just you kind got of came, beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been drinking it on the way. <laughs> so so he kind of just resigns himself. <sighs> I might as well go find this blasted in, and then he starts asking around. Uh, where the where the the comfy cow is, 
the comfy couch. couch. It takes you a little while. People understand fairly quickly you're meaning the happy cow. They correct you and point you in the right direction. There's a, a stable out back that's uh, manned by three little halfling boys. And uh, they're taking care of horses and ponies. And they're willing to look after your Rolo for you if you so desire. So yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna wheel that behind. He's gonna give the boys not like a not like a, a mean talking to, but a stern talking to. Now you rot, you watch poor Roll all carefully. He's a very old donkey, and you take good care of him, all right. And then he tosses a gold coin to each of them. They are very eager. <laughs> At first, they were just like, uh huh, uh huh, and then you toss them the coins, and they're like. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> they're like they're like singing like a musical out of the Wizard of Oz. Come, come here and a rum rum there and a couple of toddy daws. I just imagine three little halfling boys trying to take care of even just one normal sized horse. <laughs> <laughs> they're working together. They have dual step ladders. They're standing on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Three halfling boys is one They've man. They've got in tools. Coat. I'm sure ha they're ingenuity ingenuitive. Halflings in a taller world, you know? They they've figured it out. Uh all right. They actually so... dug a pit so that the donkeys walk down and they look at <laughs> <laughs> So that they actually be eye level with the donkey. So he's not gonna he's not gonna pull a pint out of his new barrel. Uh, but he is going to take his mug in with him into the into the happy cow, and he's uh he's going to look around, kind of kind of kind of open the door, Wild West saloon style, not really making a scene, just very proud about his interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to he's going to find uh, um, the three of them. I'm a I think if I remember correctly, the three of you are all at a table now. Bravo Quarks showed well, up. Well, yeah, did, Bravo. Did what did you do in your Um. I imagine Bravo would enter and then immediately like he would he would probably look around to see if um Karen and North were here and then make his way up to the bar. <clears throat> They're easy to spot. Um like I said, the it's not packed in here, so um seeing the customers fairly easy. Um you spot them at a table and then make your way over to the bar. And Paula's back there tending to uh, customers. And she spots you and says, Oh, hello, you, you made it. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, I'm glad things uh, turned out. Can I get you something? Yes, hello, little one. Yes, things turned out quite great. Um, I, I did a wonderful job for everyone, and everyone is pleased with me. <laughs> That's... Great to hear. Yes, uh, we're becoming quite fast friends. <laughs> oh, are you? Yes, oh. yes. We're going to continue adventuring together after we're done here. North's ear twitches and she kind of turns around. <laughs> that's um, that's wonderful. I'm ha I'm happy for you. Uh, can mm, I get yes. you something to drink? Um, yes. Do you have anything uh, from from the hill region? <laughs> uh. No, I'm. A, I don't think so. Our selection is mostly Water Davian. Um, surrounding towns, it's mostly local craft um, brews. You know. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything that that tastes like a hill? I I'm not sure what you mean. You know, quite quite uh, uh, strong, bold, and rocky. Ah, I think I might have just the thing. Are you saying you're looking for something that tastes like the Rockies? <laughs> she uh, hops down from behind the bar and goes into the back again. And she takes a little while, a minute or two, and then comes back out with a mug. It's got a thick froth at the top. And it's dense. Hmm. And she like puts him. it. <laughs> she puts it on the counter and slides it across to you and says try that one out for size see what you think um bravo um seeing seeing the mug slide across the bar on on the slide across to him on the bar um would take take his his finger and and push it into the head and and 
spin it around a little bit. Um, and then immediately take it out and taste it. It's bitter. It's strong. It's raw. Almost. It's uh, intense. Hmm. Um, Bravo looks up at Mala. A, a wily smile creeping across his face. And he winks at her and says, I like this. <laughs> I thought you might. Um, he takes his mug and he heads over to the table. Uh, he starts to head over the table, realizes he hasn't paid for it, and turns back and says, Ah, uh, yes, uh, what, what, is, what does this cost? Oh, no, it's, it's on the house, my friend. Uh, for what you did to, with uh, Theo, for my friend Eliza... I'm happy, I'm happy to do it. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, Theo and I are very good friends. And then he turns away and heads back to the table of that Darian and Northern at... Oh, bravo, bravo, Quarks. The friend to everybody, whether they <laughs> want it or not. Gives you a little bit of a... Okay, and then and goes back to your customers at the bar. <laughs> um, so you approach the table with Norris and Carrion, and you two... Very obviously, you watch him come. He kind of stumbles through the crowd a bit, not like stumbling, just kind of like watching the mug and like bumping mm -hmm. into people. And oh, oh, he makes his way over to you. I uh, I shuffle towards the table and I say, "Yes, um, might I sit down?" No. She looks him dead in the eye and says, "No." Karen. I and then she busts out laughing before Carrion can say anything. She's had two <laughs> glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> She's rosy in the cheeks. She's her ears, the tips bit of her more. ears are red. Yeah, a, her, a little bit more like Karen people Karen opens would. his mouth to say something and then just looks over at North and just puts his head in his hand, leaning on the table. He just motions. Uh, I was kidding. You can sit down. Sit down, Al. He, he motions Promises. the other hand oh, to the yes. chair. Uh, what? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll sit over here then. And he sits down, um, slowly sipping his drink. <laughs> At the wrong table. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not very long after this. Braddock walks in. It's I, easy I to spot them. Yeah, I would imagine that Braddock doesn't quite spot him away not because they're not standing out just because Braddock's kind of single-mindedly focused on the bar mm -hmm. and <coughs> it's, it's it's door comes open he sees the room kind of quickly and then beeline to the end of the bar he doesn't head to where the people are packed he doesn't stick himself in the throng of people he goes down to that area of the bar where the waitresses go to the short bar their drink orders yeah, yeah. And he goes down there, and he does he does the the classic flash in a gold coin to get the bartender's attention, kind of thing. And uh, and then he and then he you know it's when he sees it, it's Mala. I, th that's right, Mala is the one right? behind the bar. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, ah, right. The the uh, the, the uh, halfling we did the job for. Yes. Fancy meeting you here, he says terribly awkwardly. Yes, F fancy that. I did Im invite you here. Uh, thank you, by the way, for your help uh, with Eliza and Theo. Well. But you don't need your coin here. It was rather painless, all things told. Well, that's good to hear. I, uh, Your friends were telling me it was a bit of a close call. Well... No, wasn't that bad, really. It's been worse. It could be always better. Yeah, Carrion. Oh, wait, no, Carrion can't even... Never mind. No, he's a bit far Can away. We, as half-elf... Let's see, I'm half-elf. Travis, you half-elf? Human. 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 I'm as a half-elf, how much can I, like, actually hear in a crowded room? Uh, your senses would be sharper than a human, but it's still like a busy room so there's a lot of background noise so there's a din and you're yeah you can pick out 
individual voices um maybe not the words that they're speaking but like you can tell there's a fellow over there there's a a gal over there you can i was just wondering if i can ease her up on this conversation you can make a perception check uh you you get the odd word but uh you're not hearing enough to hear the full conversation okay. so, so brad can so which you. odd word do you want me to hear so that when you walk <laughs> over she can say something about it you i would say because braddock's faced away from you you can hear that he's speaking because his voice is deep but you're mostly picking up mala's words okay so so braddock kind of continues as he is he i assume so mala would pour him a beer and, and hand it to him yep and he takes a big he takes a big drink of it right then uh I suppose we're all settled then. The boy's been found, and here I am to claim on the free drink. And and you're welcome to stay the night as well. I have rooms for you all. Um, if you so wish. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not going to force you to stay here if you don't want to. But uh, if you're staying the night in Daggerford anyways, warm, clean bed for you. Where where are you headed from here? I'll be taking my goods back to Salvolar. Heading south? I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, Braddock knows. Yeah. <laughs> Dower is completely forgotten. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's correct, though. Salvolar is halfway between Daggerford and... Um, um, What's the next town, the next big town south? We talked about this. Darn it. It's, it's um, between Baylor's Gate and Waterdeep. That's it's right. like halfway between them. So, yeah. So he he pints, he, he pipes up. Uh, it all, all told, it was a pleasure to help you. Uh, and uh, I do thank you for the room. And he kind of turns around and. And sees, uh, and sees the other three at the table. I suppose I should go and sit with them, then. I bid you the best, my dear. And he walks away. Alright, Braddock approaches the table. Right then, you three have settled in well. What have I missed? Oh, this 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 is delightful. It's Be called quiet, Hill and Ale. He turns to he turns to the druid and 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 the half elf. Now, as I was saying, what have I missed? I thought I thought he was. Was, was you cut out? What was that Dave? I mean, I thought Hillel was pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing. You've. Well, no, I take that back. Any motions for a chair? Have a seat. Braddock kind of spins the, the chair around and sits cool guy style <laughs> with his arms on Let's the back rap. of the chair. <laughs> trying to rap with the kiddo. North like sits up and then sort of like looks down at him like... <laughs> and uh, so, so when so when the, when, uh, when Carrion said that uh that i that i had actually missed something um braddock's eye braddock's eye barrel kind of kind of cocks up and he looks quizzically at the at the druid is that so friend druid tell me more and he takes a big drink of his beer well i can't say you'd be rather interested since you'll be returning home but uh it seems there there's a bit of a goblin problem up in nightstone I, some lady, uh, Velrosa, is looking for help. If there's nothing around here, I think North and I will be heading that way. There's a woman named... Did you say it was Valrosa? Uh, something like that, I suppose. She's looking for help dealing with goblins. Interesting. Uh, quick, quick sidebar, out of game. 
<laughs> I really like. I really would have liked it if when <laughs> when Carrion said that there were goblins afoot, <laughs> if Braddock would have just spit his beer out all over the elf. But that's he would have had to have turned his whole body to do it. <laughs> Why would he do that? Because <laughs> he's a jerk. <laughs> Out of shock, out of shock at the mention of goblins. Goblins aren't that uncommon. Well, the... Oh, I thought it would have been just funny. Like, <laughs> that again. And then, and then, like, and then Carrion just mentions the weather and Braddock does it again. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> no, but he would, he would be, he would be that blatantly rude to the door to the to the elf to the dwarf yeah you know the dwarf <laughs> we got jesus he's like rude it's how i say hi so he uh he takes a big long pull from his beer and he he brings it away and he's got he's got white foam in his um uh, in his beard so uh bravo we know uh braddock is is intending to go home um it sounds like there are a lot of goblins, and uh, magic would be quite helpful to have with us. Mm. Uh, yes. She looks over to him and says, "No." Yes, magic. Magic is is quite good for a lot of things. I actually found a book. Um, it's it's really good in it's it's for it's good for farming. Yes. Uh, Did she found, see? Oh, never mind. They found a way to to uh, magic some some farm equipment so you can get better better crops. Well, I will be honest with you. I don't think we'll be doing much farming. Um, she kind of interjects. So wait, you want to teach garb goblins how to farm? No, 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 no. Uh, knowledge, knowledge is a tool. It's it's the most useful tool we have. Uh, the yeah, more we knowledge have we have, tools, but the, for what? For for things. I mean, <laughs> what about this thing? She asks, putting down the thing, the her glass. I mean, that, that is a tool for drinking. Um, no, 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 no. The thing we're talking about. Farming. No. <laughs> goblins. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I don't know that you could farm goblins very well. I, I haven't found a book on that yet. She turns to Carrion. Please, no. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I, I would be delighted to... to to continue traveling with my new friends, um, I I haven't got anywhere I need to be. Right now, she's like playing with the condensation uh, left from her wine glass, knowing her inevitable fate. Despite what North says and wants, I think you would be uh, an able-bodied, uh, an able-bodied. <laughs> yes, you'd be an able-bodied <laughs> sailor on this vessel. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> We're not talking pirate ship game. <laughs> We're getting into what some is? weird analogies, guys. <laughs> Bravo kind of looks at himself game. and back at Carrion and goes, well, uh, alive, I'm not sure about able-bodied. <laughs> That's for sure. She picks up her glass and takes another sip. Mala comes round with a round for everybody, fresh, fresh drinks, and uh, looks at Carrion and Norris and says, if, uh, I just thought I should warn you, if if you're planning on traveling north any further than than uh, Nightstone, um, we've been hearing lots of rumors about giants um, attacking villages and, and things, so just uh, be careful. You know, they're dangerous. I, I'm sure you are aware of that. That's pretty silly of me to say, but just... Be careful. Um, the the city guard here are on on alert for giant activity. So I just thought I'd pass on a warning. Uh, Malas, what what kind of giants? There's there's many different kinds. Um, yes, perhaps it, it would be helpful to know specifically which kind of giants we should be looking. At. Well, it depends on where you're headed. Um, up by the the spine of the world, the mountains there, there's uh, there's lots of rumors of stone giant activity. There's, um, I think it's mostly hill giants in this area, but uh, we're hearing rumors of all all sorts, really. Mm, well, North's I'd, getting I'm... a little nervous with the talk of giants. Yeah, because she's assume... like holding her glass to like keep herself from fidgeting too much. 
And as soon as uh, as soon as Mala mentioned giants, it was pretty obvious to the other three that uh, that that Braddock was trying to seem nonplussed about the whole thing, but you could very clearly see his eyes, his eyebrows go up, and there was there was shock, but down. You know, he wasn't he wasn't immediately showing the shock. Like he wasn't. Oh my god! But you could see that he he's definitely listening now. Hmm. Yes. Well, um, I I don't think we'll have to worry about all of the giants. Um, probably just the ones closest. Certainly, and I mean, not all giants are bad. Just no, like... no, no, no. Of course not. That would be silly. Yeah, but just you know, keep your eyes open. That's not to say that you'll come across any, but the the rumors do seem to be picking up in frequency. You know, so just just be careful. I'm sure you guys can take care of yourselves, but it's always helpful to know what you're going up against, you know? Mm, yes. See, and I look over at North and I say, yes, see, knowledge is a great tool. She just <laughs> glares at him. Mala looks at you awkwardly and walks away. <laughs> if I'm to understand the three of you, you mean to actually go and help this woman deal with her goblin problem? Uh, yes, of course. Why wouldn't we? Well, it's on our way to something else, so might as well. It's just some goblins. We've already Aye. dealt with those. Aye, it is just some goblins. But it's just some goblins, and in between the two of us are some giants. We don't know that yet. She says, trying to not sound a little scared. Mala's not steered us wrong so far. So, uh. Well, rumors are rumors, but uh, I'm definitely going to be sure to heed them, because that's part of the reason I'm here. Though I don't intend to set out to, to Nightstone tomorrow, I do want to investigate around the town a little bit. Uh, they, sh they must have some sort of martial hold here that we can approach and uh, find out about the ongoings. While they're talking, Leaf comes out from um, in her clothing and kind of comes out on the table. And she starts feeding him little bits of food. Seems excited to be in open air. Yeah. <laughs> Braddock has been quiet for, for a while and he finally... He doesn't really slam his glass down, but he just puts his glass down hard. And he says more to himself than everybody else. Damn, 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 damn. <sighs> Is everything okay? He definitely jumps up into her hands. Yeah. She's like holding him, or she's like feeding him, and then she like turns her hands, and he jumps in the hand. The dwarf looks over. Apologies, girl. <sighs> Well, the three of you are so hell-bent on running headlong into these goblins. It wouldn't do very well for me to allow the three of you to go off by yourself. Especially with that one, and he thumbs over at the elf, tagging along as well. Bravo is not paying attention anymore. He's reading the book that he bought. <laughs> About, like, animal hooves. <laughs> <sighs> But if we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly. None of this higgledy-piggledy adventuring nonsense. We are a company of far. For adventurers, right. No. For best for... friends. <laughs> no. no. We're four professionals. We have to be professional about this. Or we're going to wander in, get too deep in... And Into what? Good what? people might die. Wait a second. Are you saying you need to be leader because you've done this before? Clearly, her wine is kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that we need a leader, but the four of us need to go together as a group, not four people who happen to be going in the same direction. So let's all happen to do the same thing at the same time. I'm saying. And if the four of us set out from this inn tomorrow morning or whenever we go, we need to go as a group of four. 
not as far people. So you want to give us a name? Do we have uh, to have a name? I don't think it should be anything as far as that. But I do believe we should divide everything evenly. That seems fair. Um, a group of four people, yes. I don't know about that one. Because... I kind of got us out of that last mess, and it wouldn't be too fair if we split that four ways. She looks at the elf. Admittedly, it wouldn't be entirely fair if we gave four equal shares to the three of us and that elf. He says with the elf at the table. But if we all four show up, and we all four did something, granted one of us just turned and ran... Uh, we should at least get four shares. It's fair. The four of us put our lives on the line. The four of us should get four even shares. It's only fair. Now, I don't claim to be a leader. No, those are made for better people. But I do have some experience leading. Although I'm loath to do it again. I used to be military. I used to belong... To an army, and you can tell he <laughs> did not want to give. He did not want to give that up. Carrion <laughs> just is kind of silent. He's not really sure what to make of it. He doesn't look disappointed or surprised. He's just kind of blank face, just kind of blinking and nodding, just taking the information and just okay, uh huh. Uh, North's which... kind of looking at him and then looking at uh, Braddock and then looking back at Carrion and like trying to hide a smirk. Uh, uh, which which army? <laughs> <sighs> That's hardly important now. I mean, I think I think it is very important. Fine. Then, I was part of the Iron Guard at Citadel Adbar. I was a sergeant at arms there. But that was decades ago. Didn't... didn't they fall? No. Citadel Adbar stood since it's been farmed. Watch I'm, your tongue, Elf. I'm, I'm fair, I read it in a book. I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain that they fell. You'll fall if talking like that. Uh, history. The Iron Guard are much smaller in number now than they used to be, but they do still exist. Ah, uh, yes. No, they, they definitely got routed. Maybe once, maybe twice, but they are certainly fallen. Bravo is staring dead in his eyes. <laughs> North's like playing with Leaf in her hands. Like he's like kind of, she's sort of ignoring things right now. Grillian is stealing sips of your beer, Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo just kind of scratches behind his um, neck frills. I can say this much. Fallen or not. Routed or no. I represent the most military experience the four of us have. She raises her eyebrows. Well, maybe, maybe a fallen military. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some ointment for that sick burn? <laughs> <laughs> um, Carrion um, just sees the opportunity. Well, uh, I suppose the combat experience would definitely be welcome. And I agree, we should. He looks over to North as he's saying, not directly at her, but kind of speaks in her direction, but talking to everybody. I think it would behoove us all to uh, work together as a team rather than trying to do things ourselves all the time. A helping she hand. She kind of is... like makes a little mimicking face while he's. <laughs> a helping hand is not to be underestimated in my past experiences. He seems a bit solemn when he says that. No, I agree. And for your part, Carrion, that was some fine thinking on your feet. Running ahead and rescuing the poor boy. 
North, I don't think we could have actually taken the day without your assistance. We would have eventually gotten it, but we needed your help regardless. So I would imagine that the four of us make a halfway decent group. You mean me and Karen make a halfway decent group, and you can kind of poke an ogre. She takes another sip of her wine. I would propose this. What would have happened if the ogre hadn't grabbed me? If I hadn't been there, who do you think the ogre would have grabbed? Ha! Not me! She takes another sip and slams the empty glass down. Well then, I can see your fair, strong-hearted, and hearty-backed warrior doesn't need my help. Probably not, but I guess if you want to join, you can. But, you know, <laughs> you don't want to join. <clears throat> she says, like, clearing her voice and calling him out on his bluff. Such a freaking brat. <laughs> I know. She may be 40, but she's only, like, 13 in elf years. Yeah. <laughs> Reverse puppy. <laughs> enough, enough. If it's all settled, then we'll, we'll go as a group. Though, I, I don't want to set right out, like I said before. I do want to find out more about the ongoings here. Mm, yes, knowledge. Very good. Yes, we'll, we'll get some more knowledge tomorrow, and then uh, be on our way. What's, what's going on here, then? I thought we were heading off to that other town farther down the road. Tomorrow, she says as she tries to get someone else to bring her another glass. Exactly. Karen slams tomorrow. his fist on the table. I didn't say anything about leaving tomorrow. Listen. He, uh, <clears throat> and, he, and he quiets down and he stops shouting so much. She knows she's pushing his buttons, so she's giggling. <laughs> no, I intend to make my way to Nightstone. Not necessarily tomorrow. I wanted some time to find out the ongoings of this area. The order sent me here to do this, and I will do just that. Mm, yes, well, uh, it's not a very big area, so uh, tomorrow, after we've found out everything there is to find out, we'll be on our way. Very, oh, sure, sure, what, whatever. Very well. He just he just sighs and puts his head back in his hand and takes another drink from his cider. He has well. kept his hood on the uh well well in the tavern. Okay. Covering your big bushy blonde hair. Yeah. So the door the door finally stands up and it takes another big long drink from his from his mug and finishes it off. Well, not the most auspicious founding of a company I have ever been part of. But I suppose there could be worse. If you'll excuse me, I am going to see about a bed. What time is it anyway? Uh, at this point, it's late afternoon. Um, probably edging on evening, maybe supper time. Um... Bravo uh, will make his way back up to the bar. Um, he He's finished two of these drinks at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, he walks up to the bar and he says, uh, Yes, might I have another one? And uh, perhaps something to fill my stomach with that is more solid in nature. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, what What would you like? Um, have, have you got any potatoes? Y yeah, we, we've got lots of potatoes. Um, just potatoes? I, I, it's been, it's been a while, um, since I've been in an establishment as fine as this one. Do you have, uh, food that you have already made or do I have to make it myself? We'll make it for you. Don't don't you worry. Why don't I just whip you up something nice? Oh oh yes. Uh, okay. And then he goes to sit back down at the table. <laughs> All right. Um, she brings um another mug 
to you and then uh shortly after that uh a different halfling woman comes out um with a platter of food for you hmm. carrion uh stops her could i trouble you for some dinner as well please yes yes of course any preferences um do you have anything with meat lots of meat okay then <laughs> uh, uh just the regular dinner then sure yes okay uh and and for you she looks at north north kind of wiggles a little bit and says i would like some nuts and fruit and cheese and uh a cracker oh no more than one cracker she's had about three glasses of wine and nothing to eat <laughs> she, she looks at the empty glasses looks at north and goes all right <laughs> and heads to the back oh and some nuts for leaf she says as she walks away <laughs> all right uh a few minutes go by and then uh she comes out with a uh one plate of sausages and potatoes and other veggies um for uh carrion and a plate of different fruits and cheeses and breads for uh, North and a little bowl of nuts for Leaf. Did it come with silverware? Or diningware? Yeah, yeah. She's, okay. she's brought yeah, it's <laughs> knives and forks to eat with. Uh, Bravo's eating his hands. North doesn't use knives and forks. She just starts like picking it up with her fingers. Carrion uh, attempts to wield uh, um, what resembles a fork, I suppose. Uh, very awkwardly, but he, he manages to. <laughs> right. And... She's kind of laughing while he tries to eat with silverware, and she purposefully picked finger food. <laughs> and Braddock, uh, Mala's giving you a key to your room. Uh, actually, she brings out keys for everybody to uh, each of your rooms. She's managed to find one room for each of you. And you're welcome to visit them the room whenever you feel like it? Oh yeah, no, no, he's headed up. He's headed up. <laughs> he's like, uh-uh. Yeah. He's been drinking all day. <laughs> Alright, is there anything, any business you guys want to attend to before bed? Is there anything that you want to talk about? Anybody you want to see? Anything you want to go look for? What do you I would to like to see a man about a horse. <laughs> if we can take a break. Uh, <laughs> yes, we can take a, a pee break. Uh, what are you guys doing now? Are you heading to bed for the night, or is there something else you want to do? Um, I mean, make make fun of the dwarf, but let's go to bed. How how does Bravo feel right now? Make a Constitution saving throw. Oh, actually, North, you too. Okay, Constitution. Oh. <laughs> Bravo's not feeling much pain right now. <laughs> you are tipsy, yeah. but in the giggly, kind of happy area of tipsy. You're not I am the, in the. I should not have another. Don't tell me to have another. Have another. You feel good sitting down, but when you stand up, it feels a little different. <laughs> this is fun. Um, Bravo would like to get up and go to the bar. You stagger your way to the bar. Uh, you bump a few patrons on the way by, but you make it there. Um, is Mala at the bar? Uh, not currently. There's a, a male halfling there. Okay. Mala. This guy looks around. Is... Are you talking to me? Mala, listen. This is amazing. I need 17 more. Bravo becomes a different man. He's drunk. <laughs> Much more so, to the point. So, um... I think perhaps you should go to bed. I will only go to bed after I have imbibed to my 
satiation. What if I make you a deal and will bring you up your next mug to your bed? I will make you that deal, Mala. Thank <laughs> you. North is totally cracking up. I am off to bed. He waves over one of the the barmaids and one of the younger halfling women comes over and he just kind of whispers, make sure he makes it into bed. She looks at Bravo Corks and just all right, <laughs> takes him by the hand and leads him up to his room, grabs his key to find out which room number he's in. Thank you, Mala. This is my room I'm... right here. <laughs> no, no, Every I'm, single halfling just... is Mala! Not, no, you know, it's this room, actually, and she pulls you over. And now my pint, Mala. I was promised a pint. We'll... You, you promised me a pint, Mala. You did. I did how about you lay down on the bed and i'll bring it right up um it's not safe to drink while laying down mala you should know this you are very small and you lay down all the time <laughs> i don't but how about just while you wait for me you lay down okay okay what a pushover okay He's drunk. He's, He's drunk. drunk. She pushes you onto the bed. <laughs> Ooh, wow, this is Ooh. going someplace else. And then walks out and closes the door. Where is Grillian at this point? Grillian was on your shoulders. Okay. So when you were pushed, she flew off and landed at the foot of the bed. Um, can she, like, be on the headboard looking down at me? You can, yeah. she hop up there. Okay. Grillian, that is no place for a dragon. You're all upside down and stuff. And then he just immediately falls asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Norris, Carrion. What are you two up to? She's still picking at her food, kind of like eating all the parts that no one else would because, or no one else typically does uh, because she's used to not wasting things. Okay. Similar, similarly, uh, Karrion has completely cleaned his plate. It is like it had just been washed. It was probably disgusting to watch him lick the plate, but he did. Yeah, North kind of did the... Do you have to do that here? <laughs> um, it doesn't really draw any attention from any of the patrons. That's... They're all into their cups now. They're all kind of, yeah. Well, it's late enough, though I don't imagine with Bravo's uh, condition, let's say, that we'll be setting out very soon in the morning. Man can't hold his liquor. <clears throat> Little girls either, apparently. Hey, at least I could stand up and not fall over. Says the sitting little girl. Fine. What do I have to roll to stand up? Dex save. Uh, de Dex? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> She's gonna fall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you very confidently place your hands on the table and push yourself upright. There's a little bit of a wobble, but you're upright. See? Oh, oh yes, very good. And uh he I can't, I can't hold down the push to talk and clap at the same time, but he mock claps at her. <laughs> oh, yes, very, very good. Very impressed. Uh, walking upstairs is uh, another thing entirely, though. Have a good night. You're not getting me to go to bed just now. She sits back down. <laughs> he just looks at her and shrugs. Okay, suit yourself. And he gets up uh, and grabs his key and goes to find his room. She makes little, like, faces at him as he walks away. Oh, that guy, she says out loud and wishes she had something, even just water, near her. Uh, there's lots of barmaids wandering about if uh, you choose to flag them down, but uh, otherwise, they seem to have realized you, your table was reaching the end of its <laughs> <laughs> serving ability. 
Yeah, she uh, flags someone down to get a glass of water and also makes her way up to her room. All right. Uh, you carefully, slowly climb the stairs and make your way into the bedroom. It takes you a couple tries to unlock the door, I but you get well it. I did well enough. <laughs> you I get can it. stand up. You got it. I right. didn't need to be carried up no stairs. True. Uh, so you all find your rest. Um, the beds are uh, plain but comfortable. Um, you get a full night's sleep, and you ri- wake uh, at the morning. And what would so you like to do? Who has a hangover? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bravo Corks and North are feeling it the next day. How badly is Bravo? You've got. A headache. You're a little sensitive to the sun, but you're functional. I would like to cast mending on myself. (laughs) You're not broken. I disagree. (laughs) Mending is for objects, not people. Hmm. North has some knowledge of herbs and things, so she probably has them with her to help alleviate her headache. Yep. Carrion wakes up and feels great. He, uh, <laughs> he actually woke up quite early and um, and got breakfast and a drink and was waiting down at the table for uh, someone else to join him. That would probably be Braddock. Mm-hmm. Braddock would be the next to rise. Since the other two drinky crows are probably sleeping it off. Yeah, they'll be the last to get up. Morning, bro. So... <sighs> Still planning to join us? Insofar as I find myself in need. Oh, I'll be happy to have you then. Um, say, where might I go within a city to inquire for more information? You know, uh, don't don't they have like a guard shack or a captain of a guard or you were in the military. You know these things, I would assume. The information shack. (laughs) Ah, things aren't the same in human civilization as they are in dwarf. And in dwarf, everything makes sense kind of linearly, you understand. In dwarves, in dwarf citadels, if you needed to talk to the guard, you went to a guard post. But in human lands, it could be a guard post or a watch post or a watch tower or a guard tower or a guard standing by himself. I don't know. Right. Uh, okay, then. Is Mala at the bar? Uh, she's not at the bar, but she is, uh, like, making her way through the tables, bringing out breakfast for everybody. Um, making her way downtown. Karen, Karen would try to catch her eye and give a little wave. Uh, once she puts down the food she's carrying, uh, she comes on over. Good morning! Uh, how can I help you? Uh, good morning, Mal, and thank you again. Uh, the beds were very comfortable, considering. Oh, of course, of course. Um, where might we go for information? Um, just, just around, for information around Daggardford. I'd like to know, um, of any ongoings? He, he's, like, reaching for words. Uh, Ongoings? Like, in the city? Uh, No. Event? Like, um, troublesome things. Like, the goblins, I guess. You know. Reddit cuts in in the middle of, of carrion sentence. Master Druid's looking for a good place to get stuck in and fix some problems. You're looking for security issues? Things that are troubling the city? Right, right. That. Yeah, um... The, the, uh... The guardhouse by the gate, um... They could direct you to the the captain. I'm sure he'd be able to tell you. He, I mean, depending on what you want to know, uh, he's 
more than willing to tell folks what uh, what to keep an eye out for. Thank, thank you, Mel. I'll do just that then. And uh, not wanting to wait for the other two uh, drunkards to wake up, he uh, he's already finished his breakfast. <laughs> he's been done even before Braddock got down uh, the stairs and uh, makes ready to leave. Well, I will. Uh, I'll be off then. I'll talk to you later then, Braddock. Braddock just nods and and tries to get any wait, waiter or waitress's attention to order some breakfast. I mean, Mal is standing right next to you. Oh, okay. I didn't know that she'd left yet. He kind of <laughs> he kind of sees the plate that uh that uh uh, uh Carrion has, has already finished and one of those, please. Coming coming right up. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Karen. Yeah, you head out. Um, it's uh, early, um, but there's still lots of people moving about. Uh, people setting up the market. Uh, people going here and there for business, and um, but it's much less busy than it was when you came into the city uh, at this hour, and you make it to the gate very quickly. Um. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, there's two guards uh, sort of outside um, a, a door to the little building nestled up against the wall. Uh, they were talking to each other and they turn. How can we help you? Where might I find the guard cap- captain? I was uh, told that uh, he would, wouldn't mind sharing some information about ongoings. Uh, I was talking to Mel at the inn, you see. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, the captain's in his office just this way, and uh, he, he'll lead you in. The captain is uh, behind his desk. He's doing some paperwork, it seems like, and he looks up as you walk in and then stands up. Good morning. How may I help you? Uh, good morning, Captain. Um, I, I was, uh, well, uh, he just seems at a loss for words. Um, well, I guess I am a druid. Well, I don't guess. I am a druid from the Emerald Enclave. And you see, my order has sent me on a mission to determine the ongoings, I guess you could say, on the Sword Coast. Uh, with all of the, the talk of giants and goblins running amok, um, mm. things to be, seem to be in dire straits. And we're having a very rough time <laughs> um, ourselves, actually. So they sent me out to see what's going on in the outside world beyond our borders. Well, uh, I don't know about dire straits. And he offers you a chair on the other side of his desk. Carrying and he sits back down. Takes it and leans his staff against uh, the closest wall to the chair. He takes it and walks out of the door with his... St- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this area, I mean... The Sword Coast is a dangerous place. Comes with its risks. Uh, nothing we can't handle. There's been um, some goblins harrying Nightstone to the north. Uh, but that's a constant plague of uh, that. You know, anyone living near caverns and caves has to deal with. Um, but nothing they around don't... Daggerford. Uh, not goblins. They don't tend to come near our walls. They can't get over them. They aren't equipped for it. They uh, stay away. But we are tasked with protecting our farmers and their land. Uh, haven't had too many problems recently, but we have been receiving reports from further north of uh, giant activity. Nothing concrete, but. Uh, orders uh from the duchess uh here in daggerford we've just increased security patrols um we're sending out more patrols to the the land around daggerford but we're uh we're just getting ready to uh accept farmers in in within the walls should there be any attacks on the land here uh Nothing has come this far south so far. Not that we've heard. 
well, hopefully it stays that way. And uh, what about uh, what about from Nightstone? Any news from there? Not recently. Um, in the last few days or so, we haven't had anybody come through there. It's uh, it's off the the main track between here and Waterdeep, so we don't get a whole lot of visitors from there but we do get the occasional message or runner uh when they need something or need help but we've just gotten notice that uh the lady Velrosa is looking to hire people to assist with the goblin pests hmm, i've heard much the same at the inn but uh i prefer not to work off of rumors well, uh, I have the official paper here somewhere, and he rifles through uh, some paperwork, and he pulls out a note, and he hands it over, and it's got the uh, official seal for Lady Valrosa of Nightstone. Um, she sent it out here to Waterdeep. Uh, I mean, she's Waterdavian by birth. Uh, she's made Nightstone her home, so calling upon adventurers and mercenaries there is not unexpected. Um, we're the closest city to the south, so we often get messages from her. Are you, you thinking of taking her up on the offer? Yeah, I think that would be uh, the next logical step, seeming, seeing as that's the... Uh the next closest city that seems to be in disarray. Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, the next closest city is water deep and it would take more than goblins to mess with them. So. Well, I, I thank you for your time. No problem. And Let I me know if, uh, you're coming through here again, if you've noted any changes in giants or goblin, activity i will at that and uh, he stands up and grabs his staff do you mind if i take the note with me by all means i have a few copies uh, he uh stuffs it inside his robes and uh heads back to the inn all right um braddock's mostly through his breakfast at this point north probably meandered down for another um Vegetarian breakfast made of fruits and cheeses and bread. Bravo, you've made your way down by now. Maybe not eating, depending on your appetites. Um, yeah, Bravo, Bravo would make his way down. Um, he goes up to Mala. No, actually, I think Bravo would go to the table. Okay. North would hand him a mysterious herb, something that would probably help his stomach. Would would Bravo know what it is? Make he a nature ask. check if you don't want to ask. <laughs> Oops, I did two by accident. Uh, you've seen it before. It's not toxic. It's usually used in medicinal things, but you don't know exactly what for. Okay. Um, Bravo silently takes it and, just, and then I guess he eats it. Um, Bravo, uh, he sits down, kind of like slumps down at the table, uh, resting his hand on his head or resting his head on his hand. And, uh, he calls, um, yes, Mala, could I, uh, get some, some tea, please. <laughs> yes, of course. She puts a plate of food down in front of North and uh, coming right up. Anything for you, good dwarf? Um, uh, sorry, Mala. Also, could I just just maybe some get some some dry toast as well? <laughs> coming right up. Yeah, the d the dwarf already ordered. He's already tucking in. Yeah. All right. Uh, she goes to the bar to brew your tea 
North <laughs> looks at him and says, you know, you can just throw that in water and do the same thing, right? As she's like picking and eating at like the group, the grapes and stuff. He's he's already like eating the leaf thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Karen, you'd walk in at this point. Karen sees <laughs> just everyone at the table. Bravo. Cookie elf, like, do, 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 everything's fine. Everyone, uh. Just bravo, I think. Yeah, yeah. just bravo. Well, dwarf's kind of like in his own negative just world. Chowing down. Like, uh. good, good morning, everyone. And he, uh, takes a seat. Well, Yes. Well, um, I suppose it might be uh, very, very good for some. Uh, others probably didn't have such a great night um, and are probably not having a terribly wonderful morning. Why might that be? He says, I, you seem to be grin. enjoying it last night. I would, I would prefer not to, um, not to talk about it. <laughs> Braddock. Pipes up at the end of the, the the elf sentence. So, Master Druid, what have you found from the city guard? He cocks his head. Karen cocks his head to the side. I'm not a master druid, though. I appreciate the flattery, I guess. Um, whole lot of nothing, actually. There's not much going on here in Daggerford, but and he rummages around in his cloak a little bit. And then pulls out the uh, the note, which is notably more crumpled than he put it in. Like a lot. <laughs> like he did not care for it at all. He just kind of mm -hmm. shoved it into wherever, just whatever pocket. Probably too small for it. Um, it's like most people ball it up and he's just like, ah, oh, yes, I will hold on to this for later. Yep. <laughs> That's right. He just, and in it goes. <laughs> and, uh, he puts it on the table and kind of smooths it out a little bit, but it, uh, it's of no use. Uh, well, uh, as we found out last night, uh, the lady from Nightstone is uh, indeed seeking help. And here's the official notice. Seeming, you know, he puts it on the table, just a matter of fact, like, yep, see, here it is. <laughs> he kind of has Nord's, to smooth it out. Nurse just eating and like, mm-hmm, yep, there, there's that thing there. Bravo's like... And that probably makes you nauseous. And like... <laughs> Trying to look at it at a sideways glance. The captain didn't have much to say. Um, so I, I guess we will be going today, despite my outburst from last night. <laughs> Braddock stands up. Right then. And he pushes his plate away from him and he stands up, pushes his chair back. I suppose I should go see about Rollo. I'll be out back in the stables. Uh, when the three of you are all collected, if you'd head back that way, I suppose we should set off then, huh? Well, I was thinking as I was going to sleep last night, um, we did all arrive here as individuals, well, most of us anyway, and he looks over at North. Um, I guess we should take an inventory of what we have and what we'll need for the trip. I honestly can't say I know how far Nightstone is. Maybe one of you would know? Would, would I know, Cal? I'm almost uh, positive. Make a... Hmm. History. Boom, I built that city. <laughs> no, but you know who built it. So, based on the things that, like, Mala was saying, um, and your general knowledge of the area, uh, you know it's a couple days north on the main road, and then about 10 miles off the main track to mm. Night Zone. So it'll take you, like, three days, three or four days-ish, depending on how quickly you go. Um, so you're looking at some camping. Hmm. We're good with camping. Are you good with camping? I like camping. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wagon and no, you can't come in. 
Uh, so, I guess Bravo would relate that to all of us. How far it is? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, it's um, it's more than a day's ride. Uh, actually, more than two or or three. Actually, it's it's quite far. Um, a ride? Pardon a ride? Oh, I mean riding on your feet, like people <laughs> do all the time. Oh, I've never heard it called that before, but I suppose. Oh. Uh, yes. Well, it's it's an elvish saying. No, it's not. You're a half elf. <laughs> <laughs> you're the half. You're, you're the half that doesn't get that bit. <laughs> um, I'm also yes. not hungover. Oh, uh, she says that she about, eats food. About four days. Um, probably. I am quite old, so maybe five. We're leaving you behind, she says as she puts another grape in her mouth. No. He just says absentmindedly, not even like looking at her to say no, just just a weary Just anticipating no. the no. Mala comes by and brings your tea and toast. Oh, I didn't have, I was pretending to sip the tea. I didn't know I didn't oh, have you, Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Never mind. I now have tea. Um, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, do, what, uh, what do I owe you for, for this? Still nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh, um, okay. In that case, I'm sorry about the mess. What mess? You'll see. Um, <laughs> perhaps send somebody who has uh, a harder sense of smell. She looks alarmed and then turns away and it's... goes and talks to staff. <laughs> it's, it's been quite a long time since I've had anything to drink. Uh, that that contained any sort of alcohol in it. My go. tolerance is quite low. Um, some of it was revisited last night. And you drank three. Noted. Just plastered the wall, the floor, <laughs> the other <laughs> wall, the door. <laughs> really, 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 it was just the exorcist in there. <laughs> well, uh, so Braddock's gonna. Like you said, he's gonna get up. He's gonna head out. Uh, on his way out, he's gonna. If he can't find Mala, just any any halfling that's working uh, there serving food, and he's gonna offer to buy um, three pounds of oats from uh, from the from the inn. Um, we're not typically in the process of selling oats to customers in that quantity i mean <laughs> we're uh... preparing for a long trip and uh well the happy cow is not exactly on the route out of town that passes through the market district so if i can buy from you it would certainly save me some time uh how about um i send one of the boys to go get you some would that be okay? How about this? I have three chickens out on my wagon. I will trade you the chickens plus the price of the oats just for my own convenience. I mean, honestly, at this point, <laughs> it'd be a fool not to accept. Except she'd be out of oats. It's probably what she goes through in like a day. <laughs> or we could just go to the market. Uh, 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 Mala, Mala, Mala. She walks over to where the dwarf is. And Mala, don't listen to him. We're going to go in a market. And she walks back to him. I, or back to um, uh, Carrion. All right, let's get going. We have some supplies to get. She's like kind of starting to take charge. Fair enough. Well, if there is anything that I can do for you before you head out to help you on your way, then just please let me know. You could have sold us the oats. Shut up, dwarf, she says. I could have, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I offered, but you didn't take. We're not going. Bravo is still eating his breakfast. We He's have some first. time. <laughs> We can still go and get some stuff, she said. Bravo may Clearly need a little some, antsy. Bravo may need some rations as well. We have some time. Braddock needs to but get But I gave his... him the herb. He's probably going to be fine. He is beginning minutes. to feel better now that it's had some time to kick in. And he's got some food in his belly. See? 
What do you mean? See, that was that was not <laughs> your character. You can't say yeah. see. <laughs> he just points at him. He's like, see. <laughs> it's it's true. Worth see, while. told you. You heard the GM, right? Right. That's not just me. That crazy voice. Omnipresent voice in your head. She motions to him, and he looks a little less pale. <laughs> It's fine. We're not in a rush. Uh, they, I spoke with the captain, and he said they haven't received uh, any summons or requests or any urgent news from Nightstone. So the city is not, it's not burning down. At least we don't know that it is. So let's just assume that it's not. She looks around and says, well, I don't want to be here anymore. And she walks out of the inn. Uh, he's just at a loss for words <laughs> and he sits down at the table again just She's thinking, with her, thinking about what he's gotten himself into <laughs> <laughs> whenever you're ready bravo he says obviously he said because he said it you heard him say it that's <laughs> what he said um bravo Um, finishes up his toast and downs the rest of his tea and uh, gives a curt nod to um, Carrie and and says, yes, um, ready to go. Uh, Feeling a little chipper, not quite ship shape, but uh, I'm sure I'll get there. Please don't puke. Please don't be what? Sorry, was that? Please don't puke on me. Uh, Karen, okay then, and uh, he grabs his staff and hoists himself up and uh, makes for the door. I suppose we should uh, find the dwarf north and head to the market. Will you be needing any rations? Uh, yes, uh, probably. Uh, I I don't have any in. Does the wait? Hold on. Does the explorer's pack come with rations in it? The explorer's pack. Yeah. Uh, possibly. Because I clicked on, oh, it has a mess kit. That's just like utensils and. Okay, no, so it doesn't have any rations in it. Backpack, bedroll, mess kit, uh, 10 days of ration. Oh. And a water skin. Mine just says backpack, bedroll, mess kit, tinderbox, 10 torches. It oh, does. there it is. It does. 10 days of rations, a water okay, skin, yeah, and 50 sorry. feet of rope. Okay, uh, yes. Well, um, I do have some. I could always use this some more. Uh, I am a growing boy, and he pats his belly. <laughs> all, 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 all right. Uh, okay. To the market, then. Karen <laughs> seems very confused. <laughs> he's not the only one. He's he's got he's not a charismatic. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> All right, so you all uh, head out. Market Braddock, uh, you were looking after Rolo? Yeah, well, yeah, I would imagine that like uh, that Braddock brings the cart and Rolo around to the front as the three of them are coming out, and mm-hmm. then all four of them kind of head off to the market. Okay. Uh, the market's getting pretty busy now, um, but there's lots of things for sale, lots of people around, lots of people... Hawking their wares. What you looking for? Who? who? Oh, Any of you. What are you looking for? Uh, well, Braddock's going to try and get rid of um, the stuff that he bought the other day. So, so basically just the weed because it's all he needs to get rid of. Um, and, uh, I heard weed and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a different game. <laughs> he's got, so he's got 50 pounds left of, of the weed. Why is he getting and, uh, rid of that? Just walking around. Hey, man, what you need? <laughs> yeah, what you need? What I, you I need? got what, what you need? need. Yeah. It's uh, edible. And, and I assume he, he, he's just going to sell it back at market price now that he's got, he needs the room. Uh, so he's, he's just going to... Yeah, you can find some new people who are looking to buy so that you don't get a loss on it. You can... Make your money okay, back. Cool. cool. I'll, I'll add. I'll just add this that price. Um, but he is looking to buy. Um, 
uh, th- three more. I'll take care of all this after the game and everything. It's no yep. big deal. But he's he's, right. he's what he's trying to do is buy the provisions for the group. He's trying to buy the food that the group will use. He's 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 buying like enough food and and daily rations, like for everybody, not just himself. Is he coordinating that with the group, or is he just doing that of his own initiative? Uh, no. His He's own just... initiative, because he cares. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seeing as um, Carrion's not actively going to the, the merchants or the stalls or anything, uh, he's just kind of following the cart. Um, mm-hmm. He uh, grabs off of the side of his backpack a hunter's trap. It's one of the uh, the bitey kind that you don't want to step in. Mm-hmm. And, Sets uh, it for an urchin. He's... Yes, this is how I will capture my prey, so I may buy things. And he uh, he he kind of walks up to Braddock and presents it to him, and it's uh, like I, I I found this um, on my way here before I met up with North and the rest of you. Uh, I don't suppose it's worth much, but uh, you seem more adept at uh, at handling money than any of us. If you'd care to sell it, sell it. No, sir, I should suggest that we hold on to anything valuable like that. If we run out of food, that trap you have is going to come in handy. What What do you mean? Karen looks very perplexed. Are we I all mean, together right now? Mm-hmm. I, I mean... North that... kind of looks at Karen like... <laughs> like, seriously? Seriously, dude? <laughs> I, I don't understand. I've never I've never hunted with one of these, so I can't say I'd known how I don't I don't understand how useful it can be, I suppose. I've well, never had a problem with hunting before. You see very useful. Oh, okay, okay. I suggest you hold on to it. Between this wheat and he pats the wheat at the back, and everything else here in this wagon, we should have enough to sell to make enough gold to buy enough for ourselves. Well, he shrugs. Oh, all right then, and he uh, straps it back onto his backpack, just imagining how he would <laughs> use the thing. Point <laughs> being, Nard just shakes her head like you can't be like dumb. Come on. <sighs> point being that it's too valuable for us to part with. I appreciate the sentiment, Master Druid. North kind of looks at him when he says that again, like, <laughs> um. Like, slightly offended. I'm sorry, can you hear him? It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Hear who? <laughs> all right, uh, what are you looking for? If it comes to hunting, rest assured, we, we won't need the trap. I'll, I'll be able to provide plenty. You say that. Do I, and uh, he oh looks God, over to North. A trap. Don't go down the stairs. He looks over <laughs> to North and pats his big belly. Do I look that thin to you? <laughs> I'm sorry. What'd you say, Carry On? She said. Forget it. And he just waves her off. Beric speaks up. Now then, how are the three of you for consumables? Things like healing potions and ammunition and stuff like that. She waves him off. It's fine. Doesn't provide any details other than it's fine. <laughs> um, she has an herbalism kit. She can heal things. She can make stuff. Well, I actually had a question about that because Karen has the same. Um, I know in three point five we really couldn't make healing potions. Is that changed in five? Can we do that with uh, herbalism? You can. Um, it takes time and some gold. Gotcha. For uh, certain ingredients, like there's. Like most of the ingredients, the natural ingredients you can find, especially with a druid and a nature domain cleric, 
in God, the I've wild. Had one of those. But uh, there's certain ingredients in magical potions that are more difficult to find in the wild, and so you have to buy them from cities. So it does have a gold cost associated with it. Um, would Carrion know what he would need to make them? Yeah, you can click on it. I, w- I would think so. Um, Druid and Cleric, um, between the two of you, all, all your training and stuff so far, I would say he would know the ingredients, especially if he has proficiency with an herbalism oh, kit. I'm just asking, um, sorry. Okay. I was pressing all the dumb buttons. Okay, sorry. Um, basically, like, there's materials, like, you'd have to buy the vials for them. Like, once you have the vials, you can reuse them, but there's, like, the magical ingredients that you would have to buy from cities that you could get at, like, an apothecary or whatever. Well, how about this, then? What if... What if we bought the ingredients to make healing potions? I could always make them in the back of your wagon there while we're traveling, or I suppose even North could. We'll just need a few extra ingredients we can't find out in, in the woods. It's up to you. You go and grab whatever it is you need from the market. Me and old Rollo here will just, I suppose, keep making the rounds until you've got what you need. Uh, Carrion just nods kind of blankly okay um and begins looking for an apothecary or rather he'll ask someone um where he could find one north watches carry on i wonder when he realizes i'm a cleric and i can (laughs) heal people did she say that out loud a little loud yeah and how many times can you do that miss north enough don't get hit she says uh-huh. <laughs> uh yeah make an investigation who um carrion who's looking for an apothecary Okay, yeah, you ask around, and uh, people direct you to the nearest apothecary, and uh, it's pretty easy to find. Um, Just takes you a couple of minutes to get there, and uh, there's a woman behind the desk who greets you. Do you come in? Uh, Day, how how can I help you? Are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, Good day, yes. I'm looking for the magical ingredients to uh, brew uh, healing potions. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, how many are you looking to brew? Uh, that's tough to say. What uh, what kind of costs would I incur? What would, for instance, what would one cost to brew one? Uh, well, if you're needing all of the ingredients here, uh, it would be about 25 gold. What about <laughs> just the magical ingredients? Oh, that is just the magical ingredients. Yikes. Ah. Well, my apologies. I did not anticipate uh, the cost appropriately. Uh, thank you for your time. And he turns and leaves. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys are looking for? Uh, nope. Karen is Karen. Karen's just ready to leave. It was more for the others. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the four happy adventurers set off. Right? We ready? Did you buy your oats? Yeah, oh gosh, yes. Oh god, yeah. Okay, you got everything you need? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. does anyone and uh, he he goes back to the group. Well, uh I suppose I don't need anything else and before you ask, no, I did not buy the ingredients for healing potions. I uh did not anticipate how very expensive they were. Braddock, Braddock pipes up. And he kind of, he kind of, the Rollo is still moving the cart forward, but Braddock kind of leans back on one elbow into the, to look at the back, look into the back of the cart. 
I wouldn't worry too much about that. And he, he kind of opens a chest that you can see the contents, and there are uh, four healing potions inside the chest. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Well, hopefully we will uh, never need them, but uh, if that mine adventure is anything to judge by, I'm afraid uh, that's a bit much. I cast Mage Hand to steal them. A bit much to hope for, that is. Am I persuasive? <laughs> Are you You're persuasive? pretty charismatic. <laughs> I do have some high charisma. Yeah, you have the highest all stats. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Um, yeah, you've got a plus five to persuasion. What do I click? What are you trying to do? Um, I want to haggle the prices down. Is at the apothecary? At the apo okay, so I guess I'd have to follow him, huh? Well, it's uh, too late, I'm already back. Oh, you're already yeah. back. All right, never mind then. I guess you don't care. You, don't care. you can't, can't go back in time. It's done, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could be like, bitch wanted to sell you 25 gold. No, no, we're going back. Whatever. It's all right. There'll be other opportunities. Not selling it. Such a high price. <laughs> I, I'm not sure you guys know what potions actually cost. <laughs> I do. Five. I do. That's why I asked for them. <laughs> they cost five. No. <laughs> they oh. cost more than five. She's right. She She's right. I have the prices right in front of me. <laughs> it cost eight. All right, so um, are you guys heading out now, or is there something else you wanted to do before you go? I'm, I'm all set and ready. Me too. All right. So you're all geared up and ready to go, and uh, you head out onto the main road out the gate uh, and make your way up. The heck is this road called? <laughs> I apologize. Is this a good stopping point? Yeah, we got. It go. is. Yes, that's true. Okay. I gotta wake up at five o'clock tomorrow. Oh yes, you're doing nice. big, big shifts. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So because I have to be at work at six thirty. Yeah, that's oh. a great good stopping point. Not yeah. Seven. You guys are making oh, your seven, way guys. out. Of making your way to downtown. Pick this up next week. Next week? No, two weeks this time. Hey. I was gonna say <laughs> no. I think it's in February. It is in February, which is next week. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Oh! <laughs> Time is flying. Well, thank you for those That's who okay. tuned in. That's we right. really appreciate you watching. We appreciate you being active in chat and for posting to your social media. That's pretty sweet. That thank pretty you very sweet. much. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. <laughs> we, promise, off, Dave. we promise we will you only get better. Hand. Yes, we will get better with time. We're all pretty new, Bye. but thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>